Alright, before we start the video, there were a few points in here where I had to backtrack a little bit just because I messed something up, which happens a lot with me. So, uh, just be aware of that. Probably watch it maybe like five minutes before you do something so that way you can not make the same mistakes I made. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy. Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be working on a Embraer 120 in Blender. So I picked up a uh, blueprint here and just downloaded it real quick. Um, all I searched was uh, Embraer 120 blueprint and this is the one right here. I'll put it in the link uh, if you want to use this one. So we're gonna line it up here with our cube relatively. And then if you come over here to the little uh, picture symbol on the right you can turn on transparency and make that I make it 0 0.5 so I can uh, see this in my cube at the same time no matter where this image is all right and then uh, also what you can do is uh, I don't like having this in perspective so I'll just turn that off so only when I go in orthographic by pressing 3 1 or 7 that's when the image will show up. So, drag it to the side here. All right, so now we're gonna click Control C and Control V. We're gonna rotate that 90 degrees. So now we have it on the front view. I just press one to switch view there. And then we're gonna line it up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the centered right on the tail there, and then I'm going to have this red line come across the wingtip because clearly they are not perfectly symmetrical. Alright, so now that we have that, we know that the wingtip needs to be just right at that green line. So now they should be relatively lined up. We're going to rotate this one. I just copied and pasted it. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees by pressing R and then clicking 90. Um, press 7 to go into the top view here. So because the picture is over here, we know the front of our model is over here. So we're going to rotate this. And uh, what I like to do here is if I did the same thing, pressed R and then 90, it would have came up here. So what I like to do is I like to start the rotation and if you look in the top left uh, right over here you can see the degrees. So I know this needs to go negative 90. And then we're gonna click 3. We're gonna figure out where we can line this up. So uh, if you look at the engine here this line is right on this line here. So we need to Find that here, that would be right here. Relatively. Oh. Alright, so I'm gonna press G and I'm gonna press uh, oh, Y. We're gonna press Y. Always get those mixed up. We're gonna drag it right there. And then we're gonna press G and X. I'm just gonna center it on the tail. Alright, now you have your images set up. What we're going to do is going to pull out a cylinder. Bottom left, we don't need all these faces, so we're going to change the vertices, which is basically the face count, down to, uh, let's say, like 20. Alright, so now that we have that, we're going to rotate our cylinder 90. We're going to press a little wrench here on the right side. And we're going to start by adding a subsurface or subdivision modifier. Then we're going to go into the top view by pressing uh, 7. Press Z. So that way you have this outline sort of format. And then you're going to press B. This is going to come up here, and then what you want to do is you want to select and drag half of it in your 
you're selecting it like you do uh, select applications on your desktop to move them around and stuff. Now we're going to press X and then we're going to delete these vertices. Alright, so now we have half of it. We need to add a mirror modifier. See, that's right there. And now, the reason these aren't connected, the first thing you want to check is to make sure um, these are centered. So what you can do is come up here, expand this, and uh, you can see it's centered on X. So uh, the other thing you need to check is to make sure mirror is above subdivision. So that way it's subdividing after they're connected and over that line because before they were subdividing these faces separately, which of course they're not going to meet this line perfectly. So uh, just a quick note there. So we're going to scale this down to uh, fit the fuselage size. And something else good to do um, when you got all your pictures set up is come up into the right here and click this filter button and then uh, apply this I like adding the clickable option here and the camera. So I can turn these off to be clickable and the camera. So they won't come up in renders, which they wouldn't eat anyway, because I have the, uh, I have the, uh, what is it called? The orthographic view on. But so, just a good habit to have, because sometimes you'll have them that aren't in there when you're working with stuff. So we're going to extrude this along the y-axis. We're going to bring it right up to back here where the the nose starts getting shaped. And then for the back, we're going to extrude along the y-axis until right about here. All right, so something to be careful of. If you extrude this, let's say we extrude this out, and then we scale down, well, it's it's not staying connected in the middle here because we have the mirror modifier and these are not actually um, like rigid together I guess you could say so if you undo that and you press S and then you press Z well now it's only going to do it on that axis so what what you have to do is come on this side we're gonna come over here I'm gonna turn the arrows on on the left here so we're gonna scale it down vertically we're going to press 7, and uh, from here, you select all of them but the center, and then you can scale on the X axis and then drag it over a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to click Control r because we need this to line up as well. Scale that on the Z-axis, kind of get it lined up here. Press 7, that looks good. Alright, the front here, so we can see this is not lined up perfectly. So, this needs to be over the door, so we can see here, and this needs to be over the nose. So, uh, what we can do is we can make these all clickable. Grab this. Grab it along the y-axis. Just to be right, right about there. So just to be precise about this, we can drag this back to that line there, and then we can drag this up to where the door ends. And if we look, that looks good. It's a little bit off, but not. Not terrible. So now let's correct everything. This needs to come in a little bit. Just like that. This needs to come in a little bit as well. Now, oh, this needs to come down as well, so we're going to scale it on the z-axis. And in case you didn't know, um, in order to do that, I'm not sure if I said it already, you press S and then you press either Z, Y, or X. 
and if you press Z, well, it's only going to scale on the Z axis. Now, if you want to do two axes at once, so let's say, um, let's say I only wanted to scale on the Z and X, I can press S, and I can press Shift Z, and then you can cycle through the different things there. Do the same for the other axes, or axes, I guess you would say. So also something good to have in your pocket. Um, add another uh, loop cut here. And then as far as loop cut goes, loop cuts go, uh, something I learned recently, which before I just had to delete them and like patch it up and it's a pain. Um, let's say you add a loop cut accidentally up here. Well, you can click shift, alt, and then click on that line so it highlights the entire loop. <clears throat> okay, and then you press X, and then down here at the bottom, edge loops. And it'll just delete the edge loop. So, very useful. Alright, so we're going to continue with setting these up. Um, so, this is a good point to get a picture of the aircraft. So, there you go. So, yep, this is pretty cylindrical here. Um, so is this, so um, right around here, this all starts to get a little compressed. Alright. So we'll just grab the top uh, group of vertices, and what I did was I pressed C and highlighted them all, dragged them up. And same here. And then we'll extrude along the Y axis. Scale this down on the Z axis, drag it into position right there. Then we'll press 7, we'll correct all the top. Now these aren't going to line up on the left side because we're only lining them up on the right side uh, because this isn't perfectly symmetrical. So um, if something looks off, you can tweak it later and kind of eyeball it. This is more of a, a guide to get the basic shape. And then as for the back, I'm gonna highlight this back end here and just drag it back until those points meet where I want them, which is right about there. This needs to be a little bit bigger. So it's this. And I'm gonna add a loop cut here. Scale on the Z axis again. And I'll extrude this back. Scale that down. Let's scale it in on the x axis. All right, doesn't look too bad. Um, all right, so as far as the cockpit goes, I'll finish the nose here first. Um, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, keep in mind these are still open, so you want to patch those up once you uh, once you're done. So, um, so I'm, I think I'll actually do the cockpit uh, later. Uh, I'll just be cutting it out in this video. But what you could do is you could uh, use textures to overlay it there if you wanted to do it sort of a model sort of way. Just have a picture there.
The other thing you would need to do is you'd actually need to take the mesh and kind of outline it a little bit so that way you don't get weird uh, shadows and things. The other thing you can do is literally line up the faces within and just delete those faces so it's you don't have to use a boolean modifier at all, which is the uh, proper way to do it. Alright, so we need a picture of how the bottom looks so we can see this is a separate part with some welding here. So we can make that a separate part in Blender. And then that is actually a part of the wing. So we'll start with that and then we'll uh, make it the shape of the wing. So I'm going to start with a cube. Scaled up right here, it's centered on the x axis. Control R. Move our mouse around so we get the center line there. Delete half the vertices, but this time I press C. Highlighted half of them because it's very simple and that's an easy way to do. Just click and drag. Delete vertices. Alright, so. So what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to first apply the mirror modifier. I'm going to get the uh, basic shape I'm looking for here. So I'm going to extrude along the y-axis. Yeah, okay, it's looking good. Let's get down on the z-axis. So. That's that's where our point is. Don't want any of this to really go very far below the fuselage. And add a loop cut here. This needs to come down and this needs to come up. Which means that needs to come up. And uh, I'm actually gonna add a subdivision so you can see what this looks like. I'm going to See that doesn't give us much information, so we'll come back here. Uh, just just a little bit in front of the wing. It really doesn't go much further. So right back here, and this all needs to come out out there. Okay. And then I'm gonna actually drag this down, drag that down. Right, some some funky going on right there. We so got everything centered. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is kind of odd. All right, I'll have to figure that out later. Anyways, um, so now we got this part, which this actually needs to go down like that. So we're going to extrude it to where it's just a wing. And now that needs to make the wing shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to press B. And we're going to highlight everything left of those vertices that we're going to be working with. And we're going to press H. And that's just going to hide those. So now this is all we have to work with. So I can press Z and that's all that's there. It makes it much easier. So, uh, we're going to press 7, this needs to be back here, and we're going to press S and Y. Let me drag this up, so it's like that. Alright, and of course that's, that's not what we want it to look like, so um, we'll just manipulate each individual vertice until we get what we're looking for. And this is going to come down at loop cut. Let's 
field up right there. Drag this up as well. to uh, fix the front here. Alright, and then we press Alt-H once we're done. That'll unhide everything else. Alright. What we can do is we can press the face thing, or face mode, and then Shift, Alt, and uh, never mind. It's all loop. My bad. We'll just press C. Highlight all the faces real quick. Unhighlight that there. E, X, and we're going to come here to the center of the engine. We're going to press Y, S and Y. Alright, we got all lined up there. Now we're going to go into our vertice mode. We're just going to highlight this front end right here and drag it back. So now, this really needs to, to come up like that, so we need a, a nice curve, so let's uh, highlight everything along the top here and drag it out so it's visible. Alright, it seems our loops are kind of jacked up here. Alright, there is something missing. Yep, okay. Um, the loops didn't write, really continue over, so it seems we got separation here as well. So we're going to make the uh, position of x for, each, for that point to be 0. Alright, we're going to get rid of subdivision, make this a lot easier on our eyes. Um, Alright, so we're going to add a loop cut right here. We have two more between these two lines here, so um, for this model it would be easier just to remake it real quick, but um, this is something you'll need to do probably if you have a very complicated thing. This could save you here. Delete that face there. I go into the line mode, so now we have all the faces we need to match up, so it's just, a, just got patched up. So we're going to select two edges we want connected, we're going to press F. Now create a face between the two. And there we are. Now we have to do the top as well. Delete that face. You have to be careful with this because it can get real messy real quick if, uh, if you start messing some stuff up. So. Okay, it's looking good. We're gonna uh, unhide subdivision so we can see what it's doing now. Well, we'll add a loop here and drag it up to there to kind of. Or actually, I'm not gonna do that. Press it there. Put it in the middle. All right. So to stop this from kind of coming off into the wing, we want this to be a little bit sharper in here. We can do two things. We can either add another loop cut and just drag it up there like that or we can select it by going shift alt and selecting that loop there we go and it was shift e and that'll sharpen that edge you can control it like a scale factor so um, there we go that looks pretty good for what we're doing. Now if we... Yep, okay. This needs to be a little bit more vertical at the top here. So we're going to select that edge loop. I'm going to press S and X. And make that and then click 0. What that did was it scaled all these points along the x-axis to zero, so now they're all perfectly lined up and straight. 
um, which is great for keeping a good geometry flow. And we're going to scale along the axis. Yep. Alright, so we need to finish the front part of um, this thing here. So move these points into an airfoil sort of shape. So here's a good example. You, we can't see what it looks like there, so we've got a reference image. See it kind of comes down around the wing and it comes forward with the wing just a little bit. So we'll replicate that. We're going to track that down. These should be fairly close together like that. And now we're going to have to do this, this inside portion here because we added that loop cut. So it um, looks like these need to actually be up, up here. Okay. Now we're just gonna inch all these down just a little bit, drag these out, or I'll select the entire loop and drag it out a little bit. Alright, so the back end, let's find another image of the back of the aircraft. So this shows the model though, let's check this out. All right. So it extends fair way behind the the wing there, which we have. Um, it's straight. It's it's almost a ninety degree angle. So so we create that. What we can do is we can start by selecting um, the back end of these inner loops and dragging it back like this. Okay, it's looking okay. Um, now we need to press 7, and then I'm going to press 9. And then I'm going to select this uh, as reference image, and I'm going to hide it from my view by pressing a little eyeball thing there. So now I have a good view of what this looks like in relation to the fuselage. So I need to sure I got everything here. There we go. Just dragging it in and rotating it so we have a very straight line here. We want to refrain from having weird bends and things. And then I'm going to select this. And I'm going to do the same thing. Shift D. And what I can do is I can Select this and kind of drag it in a little bit. Alright, doesn't look too bad for now. Um, if you want, you can add the shade smooth. You'll see what it looks like after completion. We got some, some weird geometry here. I'm not actually sure why. So you do it. And this is why. All right, so good example of this happening. So we're going to click the mirror modifier to hide it. We're going to click the little screen thing. And I'm going to press the slash button. So this is all we got. So because we are extruding, the mirror modifier is replicating this line right here over and over again, which in turn creates faces. So we need to delete all the faces in the center right here. So just press C, highlight all of them, make sure you don't get anything else. You can check it by pressing 7 and Z. You can see it's all along the center line. And we're going to delete faces. You don't want to delete vertices or edges because that's going to mess everything up like I did there. So actually, just so, just so let's say we dissolve vertices. Got rid of like everything there. Delete edges or 
sorry, delete faces. And then we're going to reapply our mirror modifier and hide it. And then we're going to press the forward slash button on your keypad. And there we are. And then this actually needs to be closer to that. All right, there we go. So now we have that. We're going to select our outer portion here for the wing. We're going to line it up with the uh, view from the front. We're going to go up top and hide our uh, image. Press Z and, uh, or sorry, just press tab, press E, and then X, and let's scale this all the way out to this line here because this is relatively straight. Scale along the Y axis until that back end is lined up, and then we'll just uh, scale these uh, front vertices in on the Y axis a little bit, drag it back so it fits. Alright, so. Um, this right here is just happening because we got the subdivision on. That is fairly normal. So we're going to select all of these. And I'm going to scale it down on the z-axis because it comes to a point. It gets a lot smaller right there. So as so we can see, this is not perfectly lined up, but that's okay. I'm going to rotate it so it's nice and lined up. And I'm going to start scaling down on the the axis to make that uh, wingtip. Do some rotating, rotating and stuff and try to get everything as lined up as you can. And we'll press 7 and we'll work with what we got from there. So um, this is all straight right here. It starts curving up front. So select everything in the front here and scale it on the Y axis so it's fairly small and drag it back. Then we'll select our next loop, the forward section. Do the same thing. All right, and then uh, we're going to add another loop cut. Drag this front end out. And I'm going to add a loop cut out here and drag it towards the wing tip there. So there are our wings. So, we'll work on the tail now. So, something I've been doing as of recent is I've been actually extruding the tail right off of the fuselage, which gives it a uh, much cleaner transition, which um, most aircraft have. This, eh, it's, it's pretty sharp, but um, let's, let's see if we can get a better picture of it. It's kind of a strange thing to... Uh, look for maybe we can see it here yep all right so we can see that it just kind of flows with the fuselage it's a sharp edge but not terribly sharp there's still some curve there so um how we do this is to create a loop cut on the fuselage where the beginning of the tail starts and create one where we want it to end which is right here we're going to press seven Press C, and then we're going to add an edge loop on along the top, right around where we want it, which is right around here-ish. Go to our vertice mode. Oh, I accidentally added that on the bottom, which we don't want. So, that along the top. Yep. Uh, go into our vertice mode. And then we're going to highlight it. Drag it to where this should be, which is right about there. Don't worry about the other side at this point. We're just trying to uh, make it as lined up as possible. Alright. Looks okay. Um, something you got to be 
wary of is now this is lower than it should be, so you gotta fix that to the best of your abilities. It's just some fine tuning. And then you got this this bend here you gotta be aware of as well. Alright, so we're gonna select all the faces that we just created for the tail. And uh, we actually don't want this portion there. And we're gonna extrude it on the Z axis straight up. We'll just go straight to where the top of the tail is. Grab the green arrow, drag it back a little bit. Yep, okay. I'll go into our emergency mode and we'll start from the front. We'll drag it down to where it needs to be. Actually, I'm going to undo that real quick. I'm going to just keep it straight up for this front section here. And we'll drag these down to the line here. And this. right here. Alright, so let's check out what this looks like up here. Um, these points we can drag back a little bit. Nope. I need to do that, just these. And we'll hide subdivision. Alright, and then we're gonna select Uh, this line along the side. And we're gonna undo the subdivision thing and then we're gonna shift E. And kinda want a little bit of curve, but not a lot. So that's pretty good. And for the back, of course, we want no subdivision at all, so we'll drag that to 100%, we want that flat. And then uh, we'll make this flat as well. Alright, so we're going to hide the mirror modifier again, because we got faces there, because we extruded. We're going to delete those. And we're going to unhide it. Alright, it's looking good. We're going to go into our side view again, and this is where we start adding loop cuts uh, to really get what we want. So, um, let's start with one for the front here, and the front end of the vertical stabilizer we're going to put it right there. And this is the uh, horizontal stabilizer, so we'll follow the line just below that. One along the front there. This curve is going to need quite a few. So it's good to do your fuselage first because now you're over -compli complicating this tail section. Uh, it would be difficult to work with at this point. So I'm going to add loop cut right there. Actually, put it right about here. Drag that right there. Grab these two vertices and extrude along the y-axis. Alright, so we got this, this back end here, so what we're going to do is we're going to select this, <coughs> this line right here. See if that's what's causing this. Nope. Um, we kind of bring this down a little bit. Bring that to there. We want to 
all this to be as even as possible. All right, looks uh, looks fairly good. We're gonna want another loop cut right there, just to kind of round this out. And then we also want to select this face here, make sure that's flat as well. Uh, we have another face back here. That we need to delete. Alrighty, and then we can add a smooth shade to make sure everything's uh, working properly, which it looks like it is. Uh, this is because it's trying to shade around this corner, which we've made sharp. So a good way to fix this is go over to the right here, go to this green triangle thingy, and then you're going to come down and let's see what, what is this actually called. Object Data Properties. Alright, and then we're going to come down to uh, Normals. Click the auto smooth thing there. And I usually set this to about 45 degrees. So anything uh, 45 degrees or under is going to try to shade. Um, you can actually mess with this and try to correct some stuff. Um, let's see. All right. That looks good. So now we're going to make the vertical stabilizer. Add a cube. Drag it back there. Scale it down so it fits that, and then we're just gonna extrude along the y-axis and make this follow the shape of the stabilizer. Typically, it's uh, the opposite shape of a wing, so the flat surface is at the top. All right, so we'll bring this back here. Scale down. Uh, add a couple points here. Now remember, we're trying to get to work well with, yeah, the, uh, the tail that we just created. So we want these points to line up as best as. We can make them, and then we can extrude this along the x-axis and see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to add a, a uh, subdivision. We're going to add a loop cut right in the middle, delete half of it, and then we're going to add a mirror modifier. Press 7, because everything we're doing here is at the top. Scale along the y-axis, drag it back. I actually got that length perfect, but um, you drag it in anyway. Okay, it's looking good. This is not perfectly the scale of the other image, so we won't worry about that too much. Well, this is the uh, same process as with the wing. So I'll get our wing tip situated by uh, manipulating the uh, front of it. Try to make the uh, the mesh kind of flow a little bit. All right now we're gonna press one. Highlight this the end here. We're gonna scale that down a little bit. And each loop cut is gonna get a little bit smaller. There we are. And uh, now we're going to work on the engines real quick. So we're going to start with the cube. We're going to press 7. We're going to drag it over here. Alright, so we have a Nice view of what it looks like. Very simple shape. 
So we're going to add subdivision first. We're going to extrude along the z-axis to come straight to the top. Scale on the x-axis, add a loop cut. Extrude on the wrong axis. There we go. Nothing a quick control Z can't fix. So here we go. We got our, our basic shape, which, um, as you can see, changes a little bit in size. should look. There we go. Add a couple loop cuts here. And get around it out. Ooh, we can see we need to this come in and then back out a little bit. another good example we don't know what happens after that point because the wings in the way so come to look at the real airplane and see what we can find here so it just comes down um, pretty sure the exhaust pipes on the top here see what we can find Yeah. All right. So this is a model, but that gives us a good representation. We'll just make sure it's accurate. Can't really see it there. So yeah, when doing stuff like this, you spend a lot of time looking at images and trying to figure out what it's supposed to look like so um yep okay we can see we got a curve we got a we got a bend right here and then it comes down almost 90 degrees uh that is perfectly square on the back okay so in that case and where is that in relation to the wing that is right smack on the back of it so start right here and then we're gonna create the shape that we we need so one and then nine so we're gonna flip that around this needs to a little bit smushed and then we need to add another control loop here so this comes down bottom we can see that so no need to worry there and we'll extrude this back or actually we need to be careful here so uh, we can extrude that here and then we're gonna take this press Like that, so it's straight line. All right, let's uh, see if we can find a closer image of this. Okay, it's a separate part right there, actually. So if you're trying to make a flight simulator, that's the reason you're watching this. Um, 
good idea to actually just uh, stop making this right here and then create a separate part for that. Yeah. All right. And that's what we will do. All right, so we need this to be flat. So we're gonna select all of this, make it nice and flat. Maybe not actually that flat. Shift D. Hey, I like that. That looks good. And we're gonna select these faces right here and press I to make a, a face within those. Scale on the x axis, get my shape, and then we're gonna extrude it along the y axis. Cool. Alright. So, the question is. I know that's a triangle, but triangle sort of shape, but we need to let's see, can we actually Okay. Looks like almost like a bucket. So I believe this actually needs to come down. So that needs to be smaller. That grab this, drag it down. We're going to add a cube, scale it down, and just so we get these lined up, we'll select this uh, control C on this uh, x axis location, and then we'll select our cube, control V. That's perfectly lined up, scaled along the x axis, down. It seems we need it pretty square in the back. Yeah, we do. So uh, we need to slowly make this turn into almost a 90 degree angle. We're going to take this and drag it down a little bit. Looks pretty good. Drag that to right about there. Drag that up there. And this needs to come back a little ways and Press a button. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to extrude this on the y axis just a little bit. Alright, now what we can do is we can select um, these uh, loops right here on the sides here. We can bevel them. I actually want to bevel this. Oh, bevel this as well. And then what we do is, uh, if I remember right, control B. Yeah, go and we use the scroll wheel to count how many uh, loops we want there. Actually, before we do that, What we need to do is we need to add a loop cut there. And if you just press enter twice without moving your mouse, it'll just be centered. So uh, do that. So we get uh, so we get this and then we'll extrude it. Oh. Did I extrude it? 
I did. Whoops. All right, press E and then Z. Double tap Z. So you're going straight up and down. Scale along the Z axis and then press zero. Can, uh, drag that down and then we can delete these faces right here. as well. Alright, and then we're gonna just patch it up like we did earlier. Select two edges and press F. Or actually, hang on, we need to add a loop cut here. There we go. Now that that's uh, patched up and looking nice, now we can bevel it. So we'll select these loops here. I don't want that one actually. sure we only have the ones we want selected. Alright, now if we shade smooth it, shade smooth this as well. And I'm going to do the auto smooth thing again, 45. Same with this, 45. It's looking okay. Alright, so now we got to work on the front here. Alright, so past this point right here this last line, this becomes circular and almost a separate part, so. Drag this back right here. We're gonna add a loop cut here. We're gonna add another one on top. Select all the faces below this two for the intake. And select all the ones above for now uh, where the spinner is gonna go. Let's scale this down a little bit. that out. Now we can actually just select these front faces and scale it in. And these need to come down.
And then we're doing the same thing we did before, uh, pressing I, creating a face inside it, and then um, extruding that back. Okay, now for the spinner, this obviously needs to be a circle. So we need to get this as circular as possible. Cut there. This is where subsurface really helps out. What a loop there. Add a, a cylinder now. Uh, paste that same x coordinate in, rotate it 90 degrees, and scale it down here. You can make it clip in there a little bit. And I just follow the outline, pick uh, the top or the bottom. To uh, follow because if you follow both of them, it normally doesn't line up perfectly. And shade smooth. And if you want it to be even smoother, which I normally do, uh, subdivision surface. And then uh, just extrude this out one more time. Now, You can really uh, get this face here looking the way it should. So, It's not too bad for right now. Um, the other thing you can do is try to round this out a little bit more as well. And then once you're done with that, it's a pretty simple process of just mirroring it over. So press uh, add mirror modifiers to all these, which is boom. There we go. And then you just select the fuselage. Keep pressing the wrong ones. So, um, yep, now we gotta patch up the back end here, which isn't too difficult to do, so, in the front. So we'll start with the front, doing the same thing as you did before. We're just selecting two edges, and pressing F, and sealing it up here. You want them typically to be the corresponding edges, so you don't end up with triangles, because uh, triangles are not good unless you're working with triangles. So if you remember right, we added this loop cut, so we need to add another one along the bottom. So, um, well, since we sealed this up here, that makes that entire loop. So um, delete that face, add a loop cut. Let me think about this real quick. Maybe we don't have to. There, that goes there, goes there, that goes there. Yep, never mind, we're fine. All right. And then we'll add an edge loop right here. Do that. 
that as well to make that smooth. Alright, so there's your basic Umbrera 120. Now, uh, to show you what I would do for the cockpit here, is I'd use So, um, if we double tap G, it'll um, stay along the fuselage we have set up, so um, you don't get any, any uh, what am I thinking of? Any strange meshes, we'll say that. It's not the word I was looking for, but it will. We're going to need more loop cuts here. So let's um, see if this can go down and this can go up. Going to add another loop cut here. don't really want triangles, so add a loop cut here, that there, actually we don't want to do that, I take this one, put it there, there we go. Still looks okay, this is getting a little bit funky, but that's okay for now. I normally use a uh, disabling tool, it's much easier, but anyways, uh, we got this window for the sake of time. I'll just show you what you can do. So you can delete this face and then um, select the loop, shift E, then, uh, oh yeah. I forgot, you gotta get all these edges on the outside as well. Then you'd have uh, some of your windows there. So, what we can do is. Yeah, this is looking real goofy right here. So. Faces. So, you have a situation like this. What you can do is you can connect two vertices right here, and then control R and add a vertice in the middle. it up to right there. And now you have something to connect everything to. Because before, uh, you can't just connect this face to this face because you got an edge right here. So you'd end up uh, with stuff not looking perfectly right. Uh, so let's add a cube. Just adding control points and trying to round out the edges here.
then we're going to scale it on X so it comes out both sides. And then I'm going to add another cube. Press 1. And uh, then we got to get this shape. Get a picture of the real aircraft real, real quick here. That's a flight simulator. There we go. So we can see it's very square, so we can actually uh, probably just bevel the corners for this. Yeah, that's almost straight across. Let's make sure the cubes here. All right, I'm back. Had a small interruption. Um, so we're going to make sure this is out in front. And that's lined up on the side view. Go to the front. Bring this to the middle, probably right around there. Bring this back here. Uh, we'll use the mirror modifier and uh, click on the fuselage so we can see where these are actually going. This needs to be closer in. Okay. We'll add one loop cut in the center. And then select all. Control B. All right, I'll make sure this continues onward as well. Or actually, hang on. What we are gonna do is we're gonna drag this back that's our separation, so that's good. So, um, in order for this to, in order to get the inside of this hollow as well, we're going to duplicate it. So we're going to select our cylinder 2, or whatever you titled it, the second one. And we're going to delete everything in the front. Those can go away. And we don't need our our tail to be hollowed out, so we can delete all that. Delete that as well. Let's see, did I? I messed it up. Hang on. Okay. Actually, no, I didn't. Scratch that. And then we're going to forward slash on our numpad. Uh, select this and this. Press F. And then we're going to add some points along this so we can complete it. We'll double tap G again. This is uh, actually kind of difficult to figure out. All right, there's another way we can do this. Select all the faces in between uh, the two we're trying to connect, which is this and this. So leave one on either end. Press E and X, and then make X zero. Scale it on X to zero. And drag it up just a little bit. There you go. Now we just got.
uh, connect these faces on the ends. Voila! So, we also need to seal the front here. So, can do that real quick. Forward slash again. And we're just going to scale it in just a little bit. And then we're going to press 1, and then we're going to press S. And we're going to double tap Z until we get the green and the red line. And we're going to figure out what thickness we want this to be at. That looks, that looks good to me. So now, we'll apply the mirror modifier to that. Select there, our new smaller fuselage that we created. We're going to select this and this, join them all together. Oh, I forgot to make sure all your mirror modifiers and everything are applied. Forgot to do that. Join those together. And then we're going to add a Boolean modifier. Select that. And we're going to hide it. And it did not work completely the way it was supposed to. Okay, so what we're going to do is what if we mess around with these? There we go. Move the boolean to first, and that seemed to fix it. So if we apply it, normally I don't apply modifiers, and if you plan to mess with it more, I wouldn't either. But we can select these new faces and the corresponding edges that kind of extrude out from them. That, and then we'll just uh, shift E again until you get it where you want it. Do the same thing for these side windows here. There you go. Alrighty, so I decided to stop with this. The only thing that wasn't complete was the rudder and the cutting out of the other control surfaces, which isn't terribly difficult, but I'll go over that at a later time. Hope you all learned something, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next video.